So you're wondering what life is like living here in Clearwater Beach, Florida. Well, in today's video, I'm gonna take you around this stunning barrier island here in the Gulf Coast of Mexico, one of America's favorite beaches. And if you've never been here, you are not gonna be disappointed. So here's what I'd love to do. Make sure you pull out all your questions, put them in the comments down below, anything I don't cover, but we are gonna cover things you can't find on Google today. So make sure you stick around for this entire video. And if it looks a little bit busy behind me, it is. It is the start of spring break. Y'all, there's gonna be roughly four and a half million visitors to this stunning beach this year. And I can't wait to give you this exclusive tour. Let's go check it out. If we've never met before, my name is Juan Alcala. I make videos that are all things Tampa Bay. What it's like to live here, what it's like to work here, what it's like to play here. And a little over five years ago, my wife Kate and I packed up our family of five, sold almost everything we owned moved 1200 miles south here to the greater Tampa Bay area and have been loving it ever since. I'm also a licensed real estate agent and a team leader here with the True Living Group where we help people just like you buy, sell, relocate, and invest here in the greater Tampa Bay area. So if you have any questions, do not hesitate to reach out. All of my contact information is listed down below. Heck, there's even a link to my calendar where you can connect with me and you can even shoot me an Instagram message if you want. Now let's go check out Clearwater Beach, Florida. Now, just in case it wasn't obvious, the number one reason why people move to Clearwater, Florida is this. Access to the Gulf of Mexico, white sugar sand beaches, crystal clear water, 230 to 250 days of sunshine every single year, and it is absolutely stunning. It's hard not to love. And over the last few years, Clearwater Beach has really seen a resurgence. As you can see right now, we've got new construction. They're building luxury condos all over the Gulf Coast here. And we've got investments from Miami, investments locally, investments from New York, New Jersey, they're bringing the money because they love what Clearwater has to offer. And it has seen a swell. Now, the city of Clearwater, roughly 100,000 residents, but the beach, not nearly as many, right? We'll get into some of the stats later. But when it comes to lifestyle, as you can see, the guy's just running by us there. This is all about being active. You got people walking, people riding bikes, people walking their dogs. You'd be kayaking, paddle boarding, you know, out on, the, out on the boat, out in the bay. You have jet skis out there. They got parasailing out here. If you want it, it's going to happen here in Clearwater Beach. And that's not even to mention all of the shopping and dining and boutiques you have access to here as well. And listen, y'all, I mean, how hard is it to have a bad day when you're surrounded by this? Clearwater Beach is where it's at. Now, I don't know if you know this or not, but one of the most frequently asked questions about living anywhere is what is the cost of living? And when it comes to the cost of living here in Clearwater Beach, Florida, that is no different. However, the thing that is gonna be different is the actual cost of the living here. And you know, when it comes to groceries and gasoline and dining out, those things are gonna be a little above average. But when it comes to the actual housing expense, this is what is going to separate the pretenders from the actual people who can do this. Because I'm gonna be honest with y'all, over the last 30 days, the average home sold on Clearwater Beach, zip code 33767 for $922,000. And that was a two bedroom, one bath, 1,580 square foot home. Wow. Now, does every home cost a million dollars on Clearwater Beach? The answer to that is no also. There was a recent condo sale that was a one bed, one bath, 760 square foot that sold for $255,000. Now that is not a big home. <laughs> So keep that in mind also. Now the most expensive home that sold was over in the Sand Pearl Resort, and that was a three bedroom, two and a half bath, 2,180 square foot that sold for $2.275 million. Now, if you really wanna go crazy, you can head up to Mandalay Point, which is at the north end of Clearwater Beach, and you can spend a whopping $37.5 million on a three bedroom, three bath home. Now, the location is unbelievable, but I gotta ask you guys a question. Looking at the interior finishes of this home, even if I had the $37.5 million to make this property a reality, I gotta be honest with y'all. I don't know that this would be the home that I would choose. Well, I do, but I want your feedback. I'm gonna put the link down below so you guys can go check this property out and let me and everyone else know in the comments below if you would choose this home if money was no object <laughs> because I have my opinions. I can't wait to hear yours. One of the next most frequently asked questions is what is the job market like in Clearwater Beach, Florida? Well, let me be the first to tell you that there isn't much of one to speak of. What do I mean by that? Can you find a job? Absolutely. Can you find a job that is going to support the type of lifestyle that is required to pay for the, the housing, the dining, you know, the shopping, everything you need in Clearwater Beach? 
I'm gonna be real with you guys right now, that really does not exist on Clearwater Beach. I mean, some of the most um, high paying jobs on that beach are gonna be resort management, you know, hotel management, hospitality management, but you know, most of the jobs on the beach are all revolve around our tourism. And, you know, I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but most of those jobs don't pay extremely high incomes. They most certainly don't pay the type of incomes it takes to take down an almost $1 million property. So those are things you need to be aware of. And people always ask, well, who's living here? Well, of course, this is a giant second home market. So keep that in mind. Um, there are retirees who pick up properties down here. You know, they work, you know, somewhere else their entire life and then they decide to take advantage of Florida. Again, they may have a pension being paid from another state. They move here because there is no state income tax and they buy a, a, a property in Clearwater Beach in cash. We have clients do that all the time, you know, somewhere between 700 and a million dollars. That's very common for us to serve clients like that. And um, they've worked their whole lives. They've saved their money. They may be selling another home in another state and that's how they buy these properties. But if you were moving here, trying to work at the average job here in the greater Tampa Bay area, it's just not a reality for you. You would really struggle. I mean, the rents over here start around uh, 2,500 bucks and that would be for a shoebox if you could find one. So I know it, when people you know, ask me about these videos, like Juan, you know, why do you go so far in, into telling people, aren't you trying supposed to be selling people things? And no, I don't sell anybody anything, right? Like my job is to report back to you guys, to be a guide and help you understand what it actually takes to get these things done. Now, with that being said, there are developers from Miami right now. There's developers from New York and New Jersey. They're investing heavily here. Why? Because people with money and people who have the means to, to move here are. So, you know, just keep that in mind because maybe if you were, you know, a doctor or a nurse, you know, those things would make sense to you. IT jobs, because you can work remote, those are typically high income earners. At least that's what we see in our clients. Um, then those things could make sense, but traffic alone would deter me from wanting to live in Clearwater Beach, trying to cross that bridge, especially during peak season. So when it comes to jobs, again, there aren't many to speak of. You do have the hospital systems right in Clearwater, the hospital, you got uh, Bay Care, which is one of the big hospital systems, but you know, just the, the median income in the greater Tampa Bay area will not support that type of lifestyle, y'all. You would be struggling. You may be able to make it work. You're probably gonna be doing some room and board, sharing with some buddies, but keep that in mind when, when you're talking about living in Clearwater Beach, especially when it comes to the cost of living. So what's the weather like here in Clearwater, Florida? Well, as you can imagine, it is pretty incredible. Now, five months out of the year, I gotta say this, this is paradise. Our average temperatures are gonna be somewhere in the 70 degree range, you know, on the lower end in the winter and on the higher end towards, you know, getting into those summer months and coming out of the fall. Um, we do have three months of really, really hot weather that you do need to be aware of. We're talking about July, August, and September. Those are gonna be the hottest months. We average right around 90 degrees. Um, it rains almost every day. Well, not really, but it feels like it rains almost every day, somewhere in that afternoon time. And, it, you know, what's happening there is the earth is trying trying to cool itself down essentially because it's been so warm and so muggy all morning. That is something that people do complain about, right? So, you know, there's always a cost associated or a pro and a con, if you will, about living in any area. And the weather in Florida, while it is outstanding, it also can be what I've heard as used as oppressive. <laughs> and the Gulf summers can be y'all. So keep that in mind because it is not a free pass. You know, not everybody's built for 90 degree temp every single day and at nighttime you don't get much relief you know it's much different than if you come from a, a western climate or a northern climate where even during the summer months when you might hit those mid 90 temperatures like back home in Michigan where we were from originally um, we hit 95 heck we hit 98 degrees but at night we'd still get into at least the mid 70s here in the Gulf Coast, you know, relief at night can literally be 81, 82, 83 degrees. It's not much. So keep that in mind. Now, the other months out of the year, like I said, five of those months are absolutely incredible. Then we start getting in the 80 degree temperatures. Usually in May, we average 80s. June will average 80s. And then also in October as well. So just keep that in mind because there are some challenges. October can kind of be on that, that fringe. Um, there are some challenges when it comes to weather, there is abundant sunshine. A majority of the days of the year are gonna be sunny. You know, if we have two or three days straight of gray weather here, it starts to freak people out. 
because that's not normal. And I was used to that. I would go months without seeing the sun. Not really, but it always felt that way. But literally it would only come out two or three times a month for a full day when I was in those, you know, up north. And down here, if it is consistently gray for two or three days, people start to whine and complain, myself included. <laughs> so keep that in mind when it comes to the weather. But like, man, the three months of sweating having to change a couple times or jump in the pool, I'll exchange that every day of the week versus that cold, dreary, gray, miserable weather that we used to have when we lived up north. I don't know about you guys, but to me, it's the best exchange I ever made. Um, and I think it will be for you too, but let me know where are you guys coming from? What is your climate? Let everybody know in the comments below because some people are so afraid that the summer is gonna be just unbearable. And it, to be honest with you, it is for some people, it's not for us, right? Um, but it will be for some of you, so keep that in mind. Is Clearwater Beach a safe place to live? Now, this is uh, the second most popular question when it comes to relocation, and for great reason, right? We all wanna be safe. We wanna live in an area where we don't have to be concerned for our well-being, most certainly, and also for our personal property. These things are important to almost everyone I've ever met. You know, I'm, I'm a husband, I'm a father, I, of course, want to protect my family and I don't want to deal with knuckleheads. That's just the reality of it, right? Now, I got to share something with you guys. Because I hold a real estate license, I am not legally allowed to tell you whether something's safe or it's not. And before you hit the eject button here, I'm going to show you where to find it. Because while I can't tell you, right, I can share my personal experience, number one, and number two, I can show you where to find the information that actually matters, okay? Now, there are three resources that I wanna share with you guys. I will put those in the description below. The number one being the, the Clearwater Police Department. They do share crime stats on their website. That's a great place to look, and it's public record, right? Number two is a website called Neighborhood Scout. We talk about this website all the time. It's a good resource. It also documents all the public record you know when it comes to crime and, and things like that so it's really good resource also and the number three uh, website that we want to do is there is a national database for crime i've showed this more than a few times here um, i'll make sure that the editors put that up here as well so you guys can check that out because these are three wonderful resources and and here's what i'll tell you i'm going to share my personal experience and i'm also going to share why I, I see what i see um, but i want you to be aware of a few things first of all when it comes to looking at this map I, do yourself a favor and compare it to your own residence, where you live, because oftentimes people think that nothing is happening around them. And then when I go show them, you know, we pull up the national database and we look at their neighborhoods and compare it to the, one of the areas they're considering here in Tampa Bay, people are usually shocked. They have no idea that those types of things are happening around them. Now, some of them aren't that big of a deal, others are, but here's what I want you to be aware of. First and foremost, I have never, taking my family down to Clearwater Beach and ever, not one time, being concerned about not being safe. There is a public police presence that is all over the city there. They're always on the beach. They are very actively involved in the community. I was at a, a bar one evening. We had friends in from out of town. They wanted to go hang out at the busiest spot at the latest time at night, of course. Um, and against my better judgment, we went there and there were people from out of town right who were in there and they started to get physical with each other and you know again this is not a place i would take my kids i was hanging out with my friends um and i'm not going to name the bar because it's not their fault right this was people who had been doing whatever they were doing all day at the beach we all have seen the drunk tourists before right and they ended up upstairs at this club and they started getting physical with each other literally within less than two minutes the police were on scene taking care of business, doing what they needed to do. So that was another reason why I was like, okay, cool. You know, you, they can take care of what they need to take care of. It's not something that I wanna be around or hang around in, so I'm just sharing that with you guys. But for the family, never would I be concerned about hanging out on the beach. They do a great job. Living here for five years now, here's what I have observed. You and I like to do things like go to the beach, right? That's why we come to Clearwater, it's amazing. We'll take our backpack, we'll take our belongings, we might have our cell phone, our wallet, our car keys, all those things with us, right y'all? And we go out to the beach and we put it all in a little package or we set it underneath the, the blanket or whatever it is and we take it down there and then we walk out to the beach. And some clown, right? Somebody taking advantage of other human beings. And, and this is both local people who live here, right? Who are unscrupulous and do those type of activities and people who come in from other areas prey on people just like us who do things like that. 
I have learned, I, I've been grateful, I've not learned the hard way, but I have seen things happen and it made me rethink how I approach the beach. When you look at that map, you're gonna find a majority of the personal property is petty theft. It's people leaving their stuff on the beach, someone comes along and takes it. So I'm not sitting here telling you that Clearwater is the safest place on the earth because I can't do it. I'm not telling you it's the most dangerous place on the earth because it's, from my experience, I don't see any of that stuff, but I think it's important for you to understand what is happening around you. Anytime you go somewhere and there's a lot of money flowing, people are always gonna be looking for opportunities within those worlds. So keep that in mind, personal experience, no concerns. Take my family down there. Love it. Not an issue at all. Again, check out the crime map. Do your diligence. Make qualified decisions based upon what is right for you. Now, question number five is what are the best things to do when you're living in Clearwater Beach? Well, number one is the obvious one, right? You're going to go to the beach. You're going to go down. You're going to soak up the sun. You're going to hang out on the white sugar sand and you are going to just take in everything this beautiful beach has to offer. You're going to sit out there and you're going to watch the tourists, right? You're going to watch the dolphins. The stingrays are going to come in in May. You're going to see those beautiful creatures out there as well, right? You're going to see people paddle boarding and kayaking and boating and parasailing. Uh, you're going to see people kite surfing out there. And if you want to do something, you can go over to the strip. You can go catch a great meal. There's entertainment on the beach as well. You know, some of these hotels have some of the best restaurants in them. You will not be disappointed there. You can go to the Clearwater Marina, which is world renowned. You know, the Dolphin Tales movie, the Dolphin lived there. Unfortunately, we have lost that Dolphin, which is a huge bummer. But I mean, it's been a huge main attraction for a long time. You can go out and do a dinner cruise on the Calypso Queen. I've done that with my friends, the same friends that we were hanging out with that night. Um, you know, we've done a lot of different things in Clearwater Beach. It is designed for activity and experience, right? You can go down to Pier 60, hang out. You know, I was steps away from a pelican. Where else in the world can you do that? Right? You can hang out with, with birds that you only see on National Geographic and see what's going on there and, and, and just do all the people watching. You've got the, um, the trampoline right there on the beach. You've got the giant slide right there on the beach. If you want to rent jet skis, guys, I can go on for days. <laughs> right? I can go on for days. If you want to just relax and read a book, you can do that too. But people come because of the lifestyle. They're moving here because they want to soak up the beautiful, gorgeous Gulf Coast. They want to see a sunset. They want to wake up and walk the beaches. They want to ride bikes or run. I mean, this is an exciting area. My wife just ran the uh, rock and roll um, half marathon right on Clearwater Beach, man. And it was such a fun experience. She loved it. You know, she got to run over the Clearwater Causeway, the Sand Key Causeway over into Sand Key Beach. And, you know, again, that's another gorgeous beach that we barely even tapped into. You can see that on our other videos. But, y'all, there is so much to do. When it comes to the best things to do in Clearwater Beach, that is going to be completely up to you. But if you can't find it here, your fun button is broken. So that leads us to our sixth question, which is how's the traffic and do I need a car to live in Clearwater Beach? Now, let's put it this way. If you do not have to leave the Barrier Islands for work, I do think you could get away with not having a car, okay? Let's say you work remote. Um, you could probably Uber between you know your home or your condo over to the Publix grocery store, which is super accessible. You can ride a bike, you, you know, there, there's a lot of different things you could do, okay? You can get a golf cart, you know, you can kind of do that lifestyle as well. Um, there is the trolley that runs all down Gulf Boulevard in Pinellas County. You could take that if you wanted to travel elsewhere. Do I think that would be the ideal living? No, but for someone who is extremely active, they love to ride a bike all the time, they love to run all the time, they're gonna be living in a condo right on, right on the beach and, you know, or in Island Estates right next to Publix. I don't know that I would need a car, and this is really subjective, and this is gonna be entirely up to you. But if you do have to cross the Clearwater Causeway, you're going to need a car. And traffic at times, especially peak times, like right now during season where spring break's going on, we've got all these people in from out of town, traffic can get really, really congested. I've said it before, I literally can take 45 minutes to an hour to come over the Clearwater Causeway, which is insane. <laughs> Now getting out is typically not as difficult, but you still got to get back in at some point. So for this three month stretch right now from basically, you know, the beginning of March, April, into May, all the way into Mother's Day, it is going to be congested, busy. We've got people from all over the world coming to visit our beaches right now. So, you know, do you need a car? That's going to be completely up to you. Would I still want to own a car? Yes. 
you know, if we get a threat of hurricane and you have to deal with that, like, how are you going to deal with that? Right? Like, are you going to hitch a ride with somebody else? Like, you need to have a plan in place if you're not going to. But could you get away with it, especially if you lived on, you know, Diamond Isle or Island Estates or even on the beach? 100% you could do that, but you'd be forced to use Uber, you'd be forced to use the trolley, um, and you'd probably be biking. And I would still, you know, maybe get a golf cart because that's probably appropriate as well. The seventh most frequently asked question is about homeowners insurance. And over the last five years, there has been all kinds of headlines and news about Florida and, and homes being uninsurable and, and uh, Florida homeowners un, uh, insurance is the worst on the planet. And listen, I'm not here to argue any of those things. Um, there is truth to some of it. Some of it is completely over the top in terms of hyperbole, but here we are, we gotta deal with it either way. And I share this with clients when they jump on Zoom calls with us and start asking questions about insurance. You know, If you're going to buy a property on the Gulf Coast of Mexico that is literally on the beach, you can expect to have absorbent insurance costs. It's going to be specific to the property. If the home is an old cottage and it's at ground level, um, which is just barely above sea level and it's built out of wood, um, you know, it's wind mitigation ability and it's flooding, are, it's gonna be prone to flooding. Those homes are gonna be very difficult to insure and very expensive. It would not surprise me to see a beach cottage, you know, with a 10 to $20,000 insurance bill on it for just the flood policy alone. Okay, the replacement cost is entirely different. Another home that is built, you know, recently out of block construction that is w the entry level is actually one story high. On the bottom, it's just your garage. Those homes are far more insurable and cost much less to do that. Now, w there's everything in between there. Some of these properties are so close to the Gulf of Mexico, they cannot be insured. Now, these condo developments that you guys see um, that you have access to, they are all insured. Okay, you can get insurance on them. The association has a uh, general policy on the building itself for damage and those types of things. And you have to carry insurance policies for your, for your personal property and those types of things. Now, again, I can't get in the weeds. I can't quote insurance because every single property is gonna be looked at and treated differently, right? If a home has made claims on it before, right? That's gonna jack the insurance rate up on that property. That's everywhere in the United States. That's how that works, right? And you don't know until maybe you go to write an offer on the property and then you get a quote on the insurance. So this is something that is asked all the time. Just know the closer you get to the water, when you're in a flood zone, when you're in you know, a, a, an evacuation zone, like the A evacuation zone, which means you go first, of course insurance rates are gonna be the higher, but this is the sunshine tax that you pay, right? When you move down here, when people move here, they have a general understanding that they're taking a risk, right? And what they assume a lot of times is that that risk is worth the reward. And I'll say this personally, we've been living here for over five years now. I have no intention of leaving. We're less than two miles from the Gulf Coast. I understand the inherent risk and I'm not sitting here flippantly saying that, it, that I don't think about it and it doesn't bother me. My home is insured. The rates are more than fair. I've shared a bunch of times. My homeowner's insurance on my home is less than $2,500 a year. It's four beds, two baths, and a pool, y'all. So it is not unaffordable. Is it more expensive than it was back home in Michigan? Yes. I also don't have a state income tax anymore when I did back home in Michigan. Fair trade for me. So, you know, this is what you guys have to take into account when you're considering making this move. And like we've said a million times before, if you are considering buying, selling, investing, or relocating here in the greater Tampa Bay area, specifically Clearwater, and you want more information, don't hesitate to reach out to me and my team. All of my contact information is listed down below. Heck, there's even a calendar where you can schedule a time that is most convenient for you. I'd love to answer your questions about moving to the greater Tampa Bay area or Clearwater. Uh, YouTube is gonna put two more videos up here that it thinks you're going to love. And until next time, go out and live that Tampa life.